magnetic field of a point charge, you've seen this, yes? We Okay, magnetic B is equal to mu naught over 4 pi, which is just a constant, equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7 in the appropriate units, which are units of Tesla uh, times meters squared over uh, coulomb meters per second. Funny looking units. But the units of magnetic field are Tesla, so that should work out. So this is for a a single charged particle, a moving point charge. And this is a formula that you ought to just memorize, okay? Much like the electric field of a point charge was so fundamental that we just need to use it so often that you just memorize it. Same with the magnetic field of a moving point charge. The Magnetic field of a small length of current, put it that way. And this is sometimes called the Biot-Savar law. This is the Biot-Savar law too. There's really only one. So Biot-Savar law. Both of these are different versions of it. And this is delta B is equal to mu naught over 4 pi and capital I delta L cross R hat over magnitude of R squared. So what is this for? This is basically it's the same as this, okay? But this is for use when you're trying to calculate the magnetic field of a current carrying distribution, like a length of wire or a loop of wire that has a current in it. And by the way, what's a current? Okay, we have we have two currents to worry about. We have conventional current and the electron current. This capital I, that's what? Conventional current or electron current? That's the conventional current, right? The definition of conventional current, capital I, is what? It's the number of blank per blank. Per blank. Say again? It's, it's not uh, electrons per second. That's, that would be the electron current, right? The electron current, little i, is just the number of electrons that move through a wire, for example, if we're talking about our model of a, a metal which has uh, free electrons in it. And so let, if I have like a length of wire here and we have mobile electrons that are moving in some direction with some drift speed V or V bar, Then we can say, if I'm just looking at, say, a point in the wire, there's going to be some number of electrons that move past the point in the wire per second, and that's what we call the electron current. So this is just number of electrons per second. Okay? And little i has a direction to it, and little i is going to be pointing that way. So what's the relationship between little i and big i? Yes. It's just charge per second, that's right. So this is the charge per second. We can write it as delta Q over delta T. It's a rate of change of charge. How do I relate the charge per second to the number of electrons per second? Okay, the, the, first of all, the direction is going to be opposite, right? Because by convention, and that's where the name conventional current comes from, by convention, the direction is the direction of positive charge motion. Now, in reality, in most metals, it's not the positive charges that are moving. It's the negative charges. It's, it's the electrons that are moving. But you can't tell the difference between negative charges moving that way or positive charges moving that way, at least not by looking at the magnetic field, right? Because if I have a negative charge moving, let's, let's well, let's do a positive charge first. Positive charge moving in this direction, and my observation location is down here. 
say, so this is R, then cross product rule, BS of R law says that V, point your fingers in the direction of V, curl them towards the direction of R, thumb points in, right? So this would produce a magnetic field pointing into the board. And by the way, this, we've seen this, right? The symbol for into the board, okay. But if I had a negative charge moving in the opposite direction, same observation location, well, I have V cross R hat, my thumb points out, but what do I then do? I multiply that V cross R by a charge which is what sign? Negative. And so that's going to do what to the vector direction? It's going to change it. It's going to flip it, right? So V cross R points out, multiplied by negative charge, I get a magnetic field that points in, okay? So an electron current moving that way or a conventional current moving that way would give us the same direction of magnetic field. So by convention, this is direction of pos direction is positive charge flow. And this is the opposite direction of electron current. So if this, if little i gives me the number of electrons per second, and big i gives me the charge, the number of coulombs per second, by the way, a coulomb per second has a special name that's called what? That's an amp, or an amp ampere, right? Or amp for short. Okay, so conventional current is measured in amps. Um, how do I relate the two? How do I get capital I if I know little i? Multiply by the charge of electron. That's right. So we can say capital I is going to be equal to the magnitude of the charge of an electron times little i, okay, because we have coulombs times just a sheer number per second gives us coulombs per second, okay? We can relate the electron current, and therefore the conventional current, to the drift speed. The drift speed we already have seen in some context. We've talked about static equilibrium situations where the drift speed is zero, the net motion of the electrons are zero. And now we're looking at cases where we're not in static equilibrium, where we do have a net motion to the electrons. So there is a drift speed here. And um, we want to relate little i to the drift speed. And that's going to depend on a couple of things. First of all, let's say I have this wire here. And I'm looking at a segment of this wire that has a length L. Okay, and I'm looking at the cross-section here, and the cross-sectional area is A, call that A. I want to find the uh, number, I can say this, the number of electrons per unit time is capital N over the amount of time. The total number of electrons in this length of wire divided by the amount of time it takes for them all to move by, okay? So this is the number of electrons. If I wanted to find the total number of mobile electrons in that segment of wire, length L, cross-sectional area A, what do I need to know? What properties of the wire would I need to know? Okay, I need to know the area, so that would need to know that. I need to know Okay, the length, right? If I know the area and the length, that can give me what? That can give me the volume. Okay, so if I know the volume of this thing is the area times that length delta L, and I want the total number of electrons, then I need a way to convert this in from a volume, right? So I need the electron density. That's right. So I need what's called the electron density And we'll use in this class the symbol little n for electron density. And that's going to be the number of electrons 
per unit volume. Okay? That's a property of the material. Okay? There's a certain number of free electrons, we're talking about mobile electrons, the ones in the electron C, mobile electrons per unit volume for iron or for aluminum or for copper or what have you. Okay? And so the bigger the number of electrons per unit volume you have, then the, 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 the uh, more conductive it will be. And we'll see, we'll talk about that later in the semester. But uh, if I know, okay, so if I know little n, the number of electrons per unit volume, and I know the volume, then I can say the total number is n a times delta L. Plug that into here, and I can say that this is n a delta L over delta T. But what's delta L over delta T? The distance it moves per unit time or the, the velocity, right? The drift speed. So we've worked out then that over here that the electron current is equal to the electron density times the area times the drift speed. Capital I is Q times little i, and so capital I is just going to be Q times N A V. Okay. So just some relationships. You don't have to memorize these, but you should. We'll be using them a lot over and over again, particularly when we get into uh, talking about circuits and talking about current and circuits. Um, ultimately, and I, I won't go through all the steps, but if you plug, if you use this relationship. and basically plug it into here, you'll get back this, okay? Or alternatively, you can rewrite this as the, uh, uh, if you have the total number of electrons going through this wire uh, in, a, in a small segment and say that this is, uh, you can say that if you have the, uh, if you have a lot of, this is for a single particle, so if you have many particles, many electrons going through, you would just say it's the total number of electrons times Q times V cross R hat over R squared. But if I rearrange this, right, we have uh, N, Q, V, we have uh, N being gonna, is going to then be equal to little n times the volume. And so you have N, A, Q, V, that is going to be exactly what we said, the conventional current. So this essentially boils down to this. So that's, that's where this is coming from. Okay? It's, it's worked out in more detail in the book if you want to look at it. But it's a, the point is it's essentially the same thing. We're just looking at a, a number of electrons and then calling that the conventional current, number of, amount of charge per unit time. The delta L in this formula is the direction of conventional current. So this delta L points in the direction of conventional current. Okay, because again we're looking we're using I here, conventional current. So if conventional current is going that way then the delta L for this little segment, the direction of that delta L vector would be that way. Okay, so that, that would be the delta L vector. And then you can just use the usual cross product rule, right? Because if you know delta L and you have an observation location, say here, and we're drawing our R vector that is the usual R points from the source to the observation location, then right hand points in the direction of delta L, curl the fingers towards R, thumb points out, right? So B is going to, due to that segment, magnetic field delta B is pointing out uh, at that location, okay?